Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, this is a segment that's in my wheelhouse. This is what I do every day for a living. I own a transmission shop, and um, this is a my opinion, of course, but um, based on dealing with many of these companies over a period of time. So I speak from experience. If you're in the market for a car, let's say used car, first of all, I recommend you buy a, a pre-owned from a dealer, GM or whatever manufacturer you want, because there's a good likelihood. First of all, they keep the cream of the crop when they take cars in on trade, and the rest they auction off, or go to the auction, or... They have a network of dealers, used car independent dealers that they have on a list that buy certain items. So the ones you see at Joe's used cars on the corner, remember three or four people probably refused that car and he's the lucky one that got it or unlucky depending on it, how it goes. Because there's probably some known issues or it has high miles or whatever the case is that the dealer itself didn't want to get involved. So keep that in mind. But now we get to the warranty part. And the reason I say buy from the dealer, because there's a good chance you can get a warranty from the manufacturer. That is key. All... I'm not going to name names, but all the aftermarket warranty companies you hear on the radio... They're all very scammy. The only way I suggest you get one of those is really only one way. They give it to you when you get the car, which means they built it into the price. Because nine times out of ten, they figure out a way not to pay. There are always exceptions, but they make you jump through hoops that you have no idea. And you call them ahead of time, look into it, and they paint this beautiful picture that they cover everything from bumper to bumper. It's all the little details. So if your car has an aftermarket hitch, that may be a red flag for them enough to say we're not covering it. Any little thing they could pick out, which they don't tell you about ahead of time, they do. The better approach than to take any of those aftermarket warranties is take that money it would have cost you, put it aside in an envelope called the car budget. Every so often add to it. Now the, the, the companies are smart because they make it affordable, what seems affordable with a monthly payment. Take that monthly payment and put it in your own envelope and you'd be far better off because you'll have the money. You don't have to answer to nobody when it comes time to fix your car. I have one now I'm dealing with in the shop. I'm not going to name the company. I've been dealing with them for almost two weeks. I'm no further along. And every time so far I've, I've marked the hours, I have six hours of waiting on hold to talk to these people that I can't get paid for. I'm doing it on the behalf of the customer because if you miss any of the steps they want you to go through, they deny the claim. The other thing they do, which they don't tell you up front, they ask you for your maintenance records. Even though it may have nothing to do with the problem you're having, if you can't supply the maintenance records, it's another reason for them not to pay. Oh, sorry, you don't have the maintenance records. We can't go further with the claim. They're usually in states that never your state you're in, so you can't easily sue them it's it's very cleverly done to, in my opinion it should be illegal some claims they do pay but you have a good shot at getting the, the lower claims like if um it would be a good example under five hundred dollars let's say something breaks that unexpectedly um I can't think of something right now that comes to mind. But that they may pay because it's a low number. But if you get into the what I do, mostly transmissions, now you have to also keep this in mind 
If it sounds too good to be true, it is. You take a car, you buy a used car with 120,000 miles. The the policy, let's say, is $2,000. Who in their right mind is going to cover, depending on the vehicle, a three to $4,000 transmission when you pay $2,000? You follow? So you could see the problem. They can't do it either. They'd lose money. I know there's a lot of odds they play that some cars will never submit the claim. But in my view, it's not worth the risk. A lot of shops, like myself, are starting to deny even doing these claims, which is another obstacle you may run into. If you do have one of these claims, your mechanic may say, I'm not dealing with it. So the best advice is create your own fund. If you do it monthly, if you do it lump sum, I know they include it in the payments many times to make it attractive. Start your own repair fund so you always have it. Listen, everything mechanical is going to break. doesn't matter the manufacturer. But these things are shady at best. There's some that are better than others, but I can't tell you which ones. They change names so often. Um, they all paint a great picture before you buy it and you call them up and you try to cover every base you can think of. And still at the end of the day, there's something that you forgot to ask or they forgot conveniently to tell you. And next thing you know, you're stuck with a $2,000, $3,000 repair bill that they denied. They don't pay tax. You usually have a deductible. They don't pay for oil. It's shady business. It's, you know, like the jokes say, all insurance companies, how do you think those jokes came about? Oh, it has to be Tuesday at 2 o'clock, the lightning has to strike. and <clears throat> Because insurance companies in general look for a way out. They look for a loophole. Uh, I mean, you can't figure them out. You know, some things are act of God, something, you know, a case of house damage and... <clears throat> And it's gotten really so bad that protect yourself and just be really careful. The repair ones, I would say just say no. Only get ones from the manufacturer. If it's a Toyota, if it's a GM, from that company. They're the best ones. The aftermarket ones, not worth it. Not worth the risk, not worth the aggravation. And if you need your car, it's going to slow down the repair process by a good week, possibly two. And then the shop, if they do approve it, I have to wait. After the customer picks up his car, signs the invoice, I have to fax it in and then wait for payment. And this is why a lot of shops are saying no. On top of the time it takes to go through all of this. So I hope that helped you. And believe me, it's... Bad. It's really bad. Anyway, thank you for listening, and uh, I hope it uh, prevents somebody from getting burnt. Thank you.